Hi, this is Dr. A with a clinical chemistry review video. We're going to take a quick look at metabolic bone diseases. Okay, so first let's look at rickets and osteomalacia. So um, they are caused by abnormal bone mineralization and vitamin D deficiency in which you see bone softening. Uh, so that malacia means softening. Rickets um, is a bone softening that occurs in growing bones. So it occurs in children. And because of it, you see bony deformities from uh, the bending of the long bones due to gravity. And osteomalacia, it occurs um, in the bone in adults, which is after the closure of that epiphyseal plate, which is the growth plate, and there are no bony deformities, but probably an increased risk of fractures and stuff like that. So um, there is really no blood test for the kids in osteomalacia other than we would probably get some calcium levels, but especially some vitamin D levels on these patients. And then we have osteoporosis, which is the most prevalent metabolic bone disease in adults. It affects an estimated 20 to 25 million Americans with a four to one female to male predominance. It is believed to cause one to one and a half million fractures annually in the United States. Um, the diagnosis is based on clinical characteristics and or a DEXA scan and a fragility fracture uh, then would be an evidence of osteoporosis and it's a fracture that occurs at an, an inappropriate degree of trauma. So it shouldn't have broken, but it did break. Uh, and some of the fractures are common would be limb fractures, so in the arms and legs and the hip and stuff. Uh, the treatment is directed at primary, the primary consequence of disease, which is fracture, uh, modification of preventable risk factors such as smoking and alcohol consumption, obviously stopping eat one of those, uh, evaluation of fall risks for the patient, uh, consideration of walkers, handrails, not lights, hip pads, etc. Also worth mentioning here that exercise is excellent at strengthening bone and strengthening muscles and preventing uh, falls and stuff like that. Obviously, also need to look at an adequate intake of dietary calcium and vitamin D. A lot of the uh, supplements there would have a mix of both because you need that vitamin D to absorb the calcium. And uh, prevention, of course, for those with a have a family history, you want to minimize bone loss, increase bone density, and prevent fracture. Again, exercise and supplementation with calcium and vitamin D are just very good ways to, to do that. Uh, and then there are some specific medications there on the market to um, help uh, increase bone strength for patients that have osteoporosis. The lab is not heavily involved here in the diagnosis of osteoporosis. This is really strictly a medical imaging type of um, diagnosis. So that is all I have for you on that.